Hi everyone, it's me Keith again. Uh, this time I'm going to teach you the very basics or the foundation of CorelDRAW. What we're going to use is CorelDRAW 2021. So this is one of the latest versions of CorelDRAW as of this moment. Okay, so CorelDRAW is a vector graphic application. So it creates anything that deals with shapes and of course fill and strokes. So I'm going to explain more of it later on as we go on with the topic. So once you have purchased CorelDRAW, you're going to see something like this. Okay, so what are the new features that it can provide and so on. Okay, so of course, the first thing that we're going to do is just to click on this one to create a new file. Now you have an option in here if you're going to change the orientation to portrait or landscape. So I'm going to choose landscape and let me change uh, the file name of this one to something like logo basic. So we're going to create logos for this. Click OK and we're going to wait for the program to load. So these are the file menu bars. It's present in all Microsoft Windows applications and programs. So it's easy to see. This one is the toolbox. These are all the tools that we're going to use. Okay. Then this area right here is some sort of a properties bar. So it's like if ever you are going to select a particular tool in here, let's say that one. So you will see that there's some sort of changes. So depending on each tool that we're going to select, the property is always changing. Okay, so it's like a modifier for a particular tool or a for, for a particular object within our canvas. So this is the canvas area. This is where you're going to draw anything. So I've drawn something like a rectangle. So let's say if I'm going to choose the shape tool. So the shape tool is like a tool from which you can manipulate the sides or anything that you wish to change on the shape. Okay, so if you want more features for this tool, all you got to do is, of course, you're just going to click on Shape Tool, then click on Object. Then we have an option in here or the feature in here called Convert to Curves. Okay, so you can curve any shape. I mean any shape that you wish to curve or distort or whatever you want to do with that shape. Okay, so there is some sort of an adjustment node in here, the one with the arrow. So if you want to create a new edge for this one, just double click, then you can create a new edge, okay? However, if you want to create curves, just click on single click, then click on the properties here called convert curve. There you go. Okay, so this one is kind of distorted already, so let's remove this one and let's create a new one. Let's say go back to rectangle, again going back to shape tool. So under shape tool, of course, to enable this feature, we are going to use the convert to curve. Click on object, convert to curve with the shortcut key of control Q. Double click. Then you have created a new edge of that shape. Single click. Click on convert to curve. Then this shape can be manipulated to create a curve. If you want to adjust this one, just single click on that side and you will be seeing something like an adjustment node. Okay. So again, if you wish to create a new edge, just double click and drag. So that is how it's going to look like. Now, if you want to create fill for that one on the color swatches window, you can find different colors that you like for your shape. Now, if you want to change the outline, just choose the color, right click set outline color then that's how it's going to look like if you want to change the thickness of this uh, line you can go up here and change the thickness to something like eight points something like that okay now up next is we are going to um, use uh, this shape okay we're going to use the ellipse tool click and drag if you want to create a perfect circle for the ellipse just hold your CTRL key on your keyboard or the control key on your keyboard if you're using Windows. Okay. Then if you want to duplicate this one, oh wait, I need to provide color for this. I'm just going to choose yellow for this. If you want to duplicate this one, just press plus okay, on our keyboard and automatically you can create a duplicate. Or you can use control C, control V if you're familiar with it. Highlight both of them if you want to select both of them. Because if you're going to highlight something like this, wait, okay, something like that. 
So it's like you're only highlighting one, so you need to box in both of them so that you will see a new feature. So I'm going to use weld. Okay, so it's like you're going to weld two shapes into one. Okay, again, to undo it, it's like that. Highlight both of them. If I'm going to choose trim, so this is the trim feature, it would serve as a cutter. Okay, the one in front will cut the one at the back. So highlight both of them again. And we have the intersect option. So the intersect option is like if you wish to create some sort of Venn diagram, then that is the perfect uh, tool for you. So let's delete this one. And we are going to continue with another one. So we are going to use artistic media tool. So let's say if you wish to create signatures. So there are options in here to choose from depending on the stroke that you like. So let's say if I'm going to cho choose this one, you can create. Uh, your personalized signature. So this is one of the best tool for you guys to create a Digital signature, okay? So that is how it's going to look like it's, it looks more realistic and at the same time the strokes are pretty much fascinating to see uh, if this um, What they call this one tutorials quite fast for you guys you can always pause it and of course Continue it once you are able to understand the topic so let's say I'm going to create a dummy signature in here. Now if you wish to modify the lines, you can use always the shape tool. Click on, of course, the line, then you can drag it. Use the adjustment node to adjust uh, the shape or the line of the signature that you have created. If there are areas that you don't want to see or you want to remove, all you gotta do is just to double click on that line okay, or that node right there. Same thing on this area, just single click on the edge, then you can adjust it using the adjustment nodes. And there you go. Or you can highlight this part right here, just to put this one a little bit closer. So I've created a dummy signature in there, of course I'm not going to use my personal signature, just for privacy purposes, okay? Uh, just a couple of adjustments on this area, and on this area as well. Now, if you think that it's already okay, of course, you can save this one as a PNG file. Be sure that you have highlighted all of them. Click on file, but first you need to save it as the raw file so that if you wish to edit in the future. I'm going to click on export, then I'm going to choose where I'm going to save it. So let's say if I'm going to save it on my desktop, I'm just going to name this one as... Oh, first, you need to find which file type you're going to use. So I'm going to use PNG and I'm going to name this one a signature. Now I've already created my very own or personalized signature. So as you can see in here guys, it's like the preview and how it's going to look like. So it's already in a transparent mode. So it's a good one and it's pretty much neat and of course the quality or the resolution is good. So once you are satisfied with it, just click on OK. There you go. So let's remove this one and let's proceed with the other one. Now this time we are going to mimic a logo. Let's say if a company wishes you to create a high definition logo for them. Let's say I have a logo in here. So I'm going to use the Toyota logo. This one. I'm going to import it. Click and drag. There you go. Now this Toyota logo is kind of pixelated already. So as you can see if I'm going to zoom it in. You can see that the quality is not that good. So if you want to create a restoration or a remake of this logo, so what we're going to do is, of course, we are going to do some sort of tracing for this one. First, I'm going to lock this one in. Just right click and click lock. So once we're done, I'm going to use this shape right here. Of course, the ellipse tool. Adjust the edges to fit with the outer circle. Okay, I'm not using a mouse right now. I'm just using the trackpad. That's why it's kind of hard for me to manipulate. It's better if you're going to use a uh, mouse for this. Again, I'm going to press my plus sign on my keyboard to create a duplicate of the previous circle. And I'm going to shrink the second one inwards. There you go. So we already have two circles in here. So I'm just going to do a couple of adjustments on this area. And if I think that one is okay... 
going back to my default tool and highlight all of them. Click on trim, remove the inner circle, then delete it. So I've already created the outer circle of Toyota. I'm just going to choose a different color for this. Oh, let me change that one to something like this will do. Okay, so it's kind of in contrast with the original so that I can easily see the difference between the two. Same thing I'm going to do with the, in the inner circle. A little bit of adjustment going up, going down. There you go. So again, we are not going to be very particular with the specifics or the accuracy of the logo that we're going to trying to create. So again, I'm going to duplicate it, then resize it going inwards. There you go. If you think it's already okay. So just a couple more adjustments on this area. Click this and highlight both of them. This time I'm going to click on trim, remove, delete, okay so once we're done with it I can just highlight all of them, drag it outwards, next is I'm going to choose weld for this. There you go. So up next is I'm going to, of course, remove the outline. Right click, set outline color. Okay. So I'm going to, of course, copy the box right here. Just place it somewhere like that. Then click. So I'm going to copy the color. So first I'm going to select this shape right here. Then click on this one, the eyedropper tool. Click on the reference color and click it over here. Now as you have noticed, uh, the logo has disappeared. Actually, it's just in the back of this shape right here. So I'm going to click on Window, go to Dockers, go to Objects. So in here, you will be able to see the arrangement of our objects. So what I'm going to do is just to drag um, this one right here, go into the top. There you go. So up next is, I'm going to click this and change it to white. So I think that's it. I've already created a replica. I've transformed an old logo into something like a new one or a high definition one. So I'm going to remove this one and place it on the side. This time we're going to create a different logo. This time we're going to use of course the rectangular shape so that you'll be able to notice the difference in shape manipulation so I'm going to use Mitsubishi for this one click on this one so I'm going to use the rectangle tool zoom it in a little bit then just create a simple rectangle over here then adjust it just like that on the sides so it's like all the sides of the rectangle should um, somehow touch the tip of the shape that we're going to refer so what we're going to do right now is just to click on object click on convert to curves using shape tool then double click on this area this area this area right here to create a new edge then double click on that one to remove it same thing with this area double click there you go remove this one again so once we're okay with it again i'm not going to be very particular with the accuracy of this one so i'm just going to change the color up next is i'm going to click on the center X right here so this is some sort of a base of rotation I'm just going to drag this one downwards over here so the base of rotation is like uh, the area from which it will not move once you're going to rotate the object so I'm just going to place it on that area or the tip so press plus sign to duplicate this one and drag it downwards 
There we go. So the duplicate will somehow rotate on certain area. Same thing with this area right here. There you go. So just a couple of duplicates and we're done with it. So highlight all of them, drag it outwards. So instead of using weld, they have another option in here. Just right click, click on group. So you're going to group three of the objects. Remove the outline. Change the color. And there you go. We have just transformed the Mitsubishi logo into something like a high definition vector logo. It's pretty much good for publishing, printing, and even uh, cutting, metal cutting, something like that. So this time we're going to import a different one. What if we are going to create a text logo just like this one? So Metallica, if you're familiar with this one, this is a band in the 80s and 90s. So it's like a rock band right here. So what we're going to do is just to use this tool. We have the Bezier tool right here. So we're going to mimic or do something about letter M right here. So all I need to do now is just to click on this side. Okay, but first I still need to change the outline so that it would be recognizable to something like red. Okay, so it's easier to see if you're going to transform this one into red. So again, click. Before you're going to proceed, right click, set outline color. Then just click on OK and continue. So we are just going to click on a couple of sides here, just like that. Zoom in and zoom out using your scroll uh, button on your mouse. Click and drag if you want to create some sort of curves. You can do that or you can just do it later on manually. Click, drag to create a curve. Then click again to create an edge. Click. And let me do something about it. Oh, wait. So if ever you have lost your track, you can just click on that one, then click on the edge where you have uh, you have left. Drag it downwards and click in here. There you go. Be sure that you have closed the shape so that by the time you're going to fill it, you will not be having any problems because it will not, it's not going to create a fill if ever you have not closed the shape. So for this part right here, I'm going to use shape tool, single click and choose convert to curves. Click and drag downwards. Same thing with this area right here. You can double click in here, single click. If you wish it to be more accurate, if you're kind of OC in terms of logo making, then need to do something like that. I'm, I need to remove the outline for this. So I'm just going to right click on this one click on set outline color there you go so that it would be much more sharper on the edge so as you can see there so it's like high definition so the difference is pretty much of course yeah you can see the difference huge difference on the logos because this one is high definition already so that's it thank you so much and i hope you have learned for the beginner's guide in corolla 2021